lemmas that let you attack? There's different kinds of pumping lemmas, but there's only one, but they're all the, main, the same idea. Basically, regular sets have these loops, and they regularly can be pumped up. And anything that can't be regularly pumped up is not a regular set. See, unfortunately, there are things that can be regularly pumped up that are still not regular. So this is not a characterization of all the regular sets. In fact, it's very hard to get an if and only if. You know what? There is an if and only if for regular sets with a single alphabet symbol for zeros. <coughs> There is a characterization for all languages over the single alphabet zero that are regular. And that's a very linear kind of characterization. In fact, I think it's probably one of the extra credit problems I might have given you on one of the homeworks. There you can actually say a set over just the alphabet zero is regular if and only if this, and explain it. You know, it's basically if and only if it looks like this. More or less things like this. You know, some linear combination of zeros, plus uh, finite unions of things like this, basically. You, just, you can't write these as regular expressions. Like oh, you can write. Palindromes. No, you can't write them as regular expression. Right. Right, exactly. Right, palindromes require some kind of recursive description or something different than a regular expression would let you do. What, what, hmm? what is it about? Well, let's try to write it as a regular expression. How about this? That's a start, at least, right? That's my first bad attempt. That makes sure that, that if there's a 0 in the front, there's a 0 on the end. Or if there's a 1 in the front, there's a 1 on the end. Is that all the palindromes? All the, all the two character palindromes, right. All the, this is the set of all palindromes where you're just going to look on the first and last symbol. But if I want the first two symbols and the last two symbols to match, it looks like I'm going to need a union of four. You know, 0, 0, anything, 0, 0, 0, 1, anything, 1, 0, 1, 0, anything, 0, 1, 1, 1, anything, 1, 1. Look, I know that's a dumb way to do it, but I don't see any better way, and we just proved actually that there isn't any better way. There isn't any finite... There isn't any regular expression that, that can do palindromes. And that's an attempt to try, and we'd get stuck if we kept trying. Does that kind of give you a sense? I hope. All right. Uh, should we do another example? Let's do another example. Yeah, good. There's one example I definitely want to do, but I want to leave it for last. Maybe I want to do a little easier one right now. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Huh. Should I do the square one again? Did was that worthwhile? Should I do that again more formally? Yeah. Let's do the square one again. This is sets of string just sets of a set of strings just over the alphabet zero that has a square number of zeros. So it, it can it includes the empty string, a single zero, four zeros, nine zeros, sixteen zeros, twenty-five, etc. We want to show that this is not regular. Because the, the k could be 0. So 0 to the 0 means no copies of 0. Okay. So that's the empty string. Okay. What? Isn't something that is 0? If it's zero. in numbers, something to the 0 is 1. Okay. But, <laughs> but the 1 is kind of like the identity for multiplication. The identity for string operations is the empty string. So when you combine one string with the empty string, you get the same string. When you multiply something by one, you get one. Now, it has the same role. The in exponentiation to the 0 should always give you the identity in the structure that you're dealing with. And the identity here is empty string. It's a good question. It's, it's the basis of deep mathematical algebra. Yeah. Good. Um, all right. Let's go through this thing again. I want you guys to try. 
what's the process? What do I write first? Pretend you're writing a formal proof. What do you write first? We want to show that this is not regular. Claim 0 to the k squared is not regular. How do you write down in math blabbering that your opponent has chosen an n for you? Right, right, and uh, and the way we normally write that is, you know, let n be the number of states, or let k be the number of states. The word let is overused in mathematical writing. Let let's not use k because I have k here. So let let n be the number of states in a hypothetical machine. for 0 to the k squared. OK. That's step one. That's this top step. Now what? Now the way we write down. Right, we pick a string. Well, in this case, we're going to be just fine picking a very simple string. We're going to pick 0 to the n squared. <coughs> We're going to note that this is definitely in the language. We have to pick a string in the language. We want it to end up in a final state. 0 to the n squared, which is in the language, and which is bigger than n symbols. It's got n squared symbols. It's a lot bigger than n symbols. OK, that we have to make sure about. Now I've gotten up to here. So far, we've got no trouble. Next step. The opponent does something, so we're going to use that let word again. Let 0 to the n squared equal vwx, where vw is less than or equal to n, and w is greater than or equal to 1. Right? We have no idea what the v's, w's, and x's are. We just know that these conditions are true. And we know that 0 to the n squared is built up out of those three pieces. We use the word let to show that we have no choice over it, to show that it is a universal kind of quantifier. And now we have to pick an i and pump it up. And we're going to get lucky, and i equals 2 is going to work again. We're going to choose. I'm going to write i pick instead of let. i pick i equals 2, uv2, sorry vw2x equals. Tell me what it equals. If I pump up w twice, then how many zeros are in that thing? It'd be nice to know how many zeros were in w, right? So maybe I, it's important to realize, OK, you don't always have the words for what you want to say when you're writing things mathematically. And whenever that happens, you backtrack and you kind of throw in uh, a definition to make this line a little easier to write. So let 0 to the n squared equal vwx, where these things are true, and let the size of w equal m, strictly less than or equal to n. Just so it has a name. From now on, we can call it m. The number of zeros in w is m. If I had written this first, you'd say, what the heck are you calling it m for? And even now, I don't have to. I could just write you know, bar w bar. But it's nicer just to indicate that it's important. So now we can write how many zeros this is. How many would it be? 0 to the k squared plus? No, just plus m. Because vwx was k squared. And when we pump it up to 2, we're only getting one more copy of w. OK? What's that? It's, oh, OK. Thank you. Thanks. n squared plus m. All right, so now what? I picked i equals 2. I said what vw2x equals. I have to convince you that this is not in my set, that it's not a square. So now I need to go to a new, I'm going to erase this. We don't need it anymore. I'm going to go to a new board and convince you that 0 to the n squared plus m can't be a square. I claim 0 to the n squared plus m is not equal to 0 to k squared for 